I hope this is visible to all of you. Is this visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Visible, okay. sir. Okay. So here is the problem. Let us start with a problem that we encounter, say, in a laboratory. Okay. Now, the, I mean, it doesn't have to be in a laboratory. It can occur in all kinds of uh, uh, situations. So the problem is the following. You have a set of data points, right, which are just some points in the XY plane. So I have denoted them here. Um, so the X's denote a set of data points. You see these marks here on the screen. They are the data points. And you see the X axis and the Y axis. Uh, sir, I see some uh, scribbling on the screen. Uh, hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I see some scribbling on the screen, on my screen. Uh, maybe other people should stop sharing. Maybe is there somebody else who is sharing a screen? We are trying to do YouTube live, sir. That's a problem. Aha. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, but uh, what do you see on the screen? You see some scribbling or you see... Uh, oh. no, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't know why that is there, but should we just proceed ignoring that? I can do that. Um, I think Hello. Sir, should I proceed or should I wait? Sir, yeah. sir. Cholunga. The one participant can, sir, at a time, on my phone. Sir, the one participant has the option to click on the phone, sir. A pretty one. Click on the phone, sir. Click on the phone, sir. Yes, sir. Proceed, proceed, sir. Proceed, sir. You proceed, sir. Sir, you can sir. Sir, so okay, so okay, sir. Proceed, Panlang, sir. Proceed, Panlama. Okay, sir, sir. okay. So, this uh, straight line is supposed to be the line of best fit. Of course, at this moment, we don't know what it means for a line to be the line of best fit, right? So, I have put that as a question here. What does it mean for a line to best fit the data? What does, what does that statement mean? We have to give, we have to understand what we mean by that statement. And then suppose we do understand what that line, what that means. Then the next question is, why should such a line exist? And assuming that such a line exists, 
then the next question will become why should it be unique why can't there be two lines both of which two different lines or maybe many different lines which best all best fit the data why should there be a unique one okay we will consider all these questions at once so in other words we will try to give meaning to the sentence that what does it mean for a line to best fit the data and then we will see why such a line should exist and finally we sh we will see why should such a line be unique is this clear can we proceed i am getting no feedback at all so i assume this is all right and i will proceed is this okay okay so we will take this running example by running i mean throughout this talk i will um, keep this example in mind so this is a very simple example with just three data points right so let's go back you know this set of data points as i said occur in many different situations in life for example just to take a topical uh, relevant for the present time example what you can consider is on y on the y axis you could plot the logarithm of the numbers of covid infected people in tamil nadu and on x you could plot time in days right we expect this to be linear uh so uh, i i if you are reading the newspapers you will see why you expect if you plot the logarithm of the number of people uh that are infected versus uh, at the time in number of days it's supposed to grow linearly for a while before it plateaus and um that's what they mean by flattening the curve so what you what you will have in any case is a number of data points not just a, a few points but a number large number of them okay in this example i have only three data points so this is not a very typical example but nevertheless this is a good example for us to work with because it is very simple we can do all the calculations by hand we don't need a computer or a calculator to do the do the calculations and uh, this will illustrate all the points of the theory so this is although this is a very simple example it is nevertheless very useful okay so the question is i will give you these three points 1 1 2 3 and t3 which are plotted on this xy plane here and the question is which straight line best fits these three points that is the question is this clear sir uh, host nagarajan sir is this clear can i proceed i assume that everything is okay will some participant please give me feedback unmute your mic and just tell me if this is okay or not hello sir yes sir it's okay it's okay can we proceed thank you very much thank you very much for giving me the feedback i need some hello, feedback hello sir i need some feedback but because i am talking to a screen so i don't know whether i am making sense or not sir is it audible okay sir it's okay everything is okay yes sir proceed yes thank yes, you sir from time to time do please give me this feedback just unmute your mics for a short while tell me if it is okay and then i we can proceed okay thank you so much we will proceed now what i suggest to all of you is have a notebook open and uh, uh, draw this picture that you see on the screen here with this point 1 1 2 3 and 3 3 we will come back to this example towards the end of the talk okay we will apply our theory to this example and see how the 
straight line that best fits the data, these three points, is drawn. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Nagarajan, sir, I see many arrows on the screen. Are you, can those be removed, please? Hello? Uh, can some participant tell me that they, are they seeing some yellow arrows on the screen? No, sir, we don't get any sir. yellow color arrows. Hello? Can somebody please unmute their mic and tell me if they are seeing yellow arrows on the screen? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There is no, sir. no yellow arrow. There is no yellow arrow. So only I am seeing it. There is some problem. So I will just take a minute. I will stop sharing and st start sharing again. Let's see if the problem goes away. Okay, sir. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll come back. Okay, can you? Okay, that is good for me now. I hope you can see this now. So this is, so you are, so I am proceeding. So what you have is a set of end data points. So there are some points, maybe 100 points, maybe a million points, maybe five points, or maybe just three points like in our previous example. So this N is the number of points. So in our previous example, this N would be three. So you have, I have drawn several points here, X1, Y1, X2, Y2, X3, Y3, X4, Y4, and so on. And finally, Xn, Yn, right at the uh, right, right side top of your screen. And the line that best fits this data, we have to find it, of course, that has been written as Y is equal to MX, plus C. If you may recall from high school that this is one way of writing a straight line. Y is equal to MX plus C, where M is the slope. M is the slope of the line. And what is the slope? I've denoted here is the line makes with the X axis. Then you have here delta Y and delta X. And the slope is the tangent of this angle which is delta y by delta x, right? Which is equal to slope. And c is the y-intercept. This is the distance along the y-axis where this line cuts the y-axis, okay? c is the y-intercept, okay? So y is equal to mx plus c is called the slope-intercept form of the straight Hello, line. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, sorry for the interruption, sir. Yes, go ahead, please. Should I continue or should I wait? Sir, sir. So, yes, yes, I am able to listen to you. I am sir. able to hear you. Sir. Yes, I am able to hear you. Sir. Sir, you are keeping your mobile in nearby. Oh, I should. Okay. I, sir, I, I will I will keep it very far. Sure. Sir, are you keeping your mobile? Yes, I, am, I I have it nearby. I will I will keep it at a distance now. Oh, that's uh, we are hello. getting echo, sir. Ah, okay. So, is it now? Is it okay? Yes. Yeah. Uh, very far. Okay. I have I have kept my mobile very far now in another room. Are you able to hear me? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is this okay? Can we proceed, or should I wait? Either one is okay with me. Hello, Nagarajan, sir. Please tell me whether I can proceed or should I wait?
could one of the participants please unmute their mics and tell me if this is okay whether we can proceed yes sir it is okay it's okay so okay. yes sir okay so p c is the y intercept okay is this clear so what we need to do is find this m and c finding the line is equivalent to finding the slope and the y intercept i hope this is clear should we proceed yes sir okay good thank you when i ask should i proceed please one of you unmute your mics and tell me because without feedback i'm just talking into the screen and i am unable to see you and therefore i am unable to make out whether i'm making sense or i am losing all of you so i need some feedback so please provide that okay so let's proceed now okay so we want to find what is our problem we want to find m and c right you are given all these points x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 so in going back one more slide so for example i have given here n is 3 and x1 is 1 y1 is 1 x2 is 2 y2 is 3 x3 is 3 and y3 is 3 right and the our problem in this case as in other cases is to find the slope m and the intercept c of the line that best fits these three these points these given points okay so um now how do we proceed with this imagine for a moment that all data points actually lie on a single straight line okay you don't expect this right you don't expect that all points lie on a line if they did lie on a line of course it would be easy to find the equation of the line but for a minute let's assume that and then what do you expect so you will be since x1 y1 lies on this line let's say m and c m is the slope of the line and c is the y intercept then you will have y1 is equal to mx1 plus c because x, the point x1 y1 lies on that line and you have y2 is equal to mx2 plus c because the point x2 y2 lies on that line and so on and so forth until finally the nth point which is which has coordinates x and y and xn and yn also lies on the line so you have a, yn is equal to mxn plus c right so you have this bunch of n equations all of which are satisfied on the left side now you can rewrite this set of equations in a, as a linear system of equations i hope you have all studied some linear algebra and so this is the way to write this in matrix form i am i am writing y1 y2 yn here as a column vector here these are known because we know the coordinates of these points right we both we know x1 x2 xn and y1 y2 yn and uh this right hand side can be written as a matrix as a product of two matrices one of them is x1 1 x2 1 etc xn1 it's a n cross 2 matrix n rows and two columns times this 2 by 1 matrix where the first entry is m and the second entry is c and these are unknowns m and c are unknowns uh just for a minute i'll i'll go away and then come back yeah uh, yeah i hope you can see this now again okay i had to do that because i was seeing some lines on my screen i don't know why this is happening but as long as you are not seeing them only i am seeing them that's okay okay so we are still in the case we are imagining that all the points lie on a straight line so what do we need to do in that case we have to just take this system of equations so y1 y2 yn are known 
this matrix x1, 1, x2, 1, x3, 1 is also known matrix. M and C are unknowns. We would have to just solve this linear system of equations for the unknowns M and C. So there are n equations and two unknowns M and C. Okay, but we have assumed that all the data points actually lie on a line. So this can be solved. This, although we have many more equations than we have n equations, which may be a large number, we have only two unknowns. So there are many, many more equations than unknowns. But since we have assumed that all of them lie on a line, nevertheless, this system can be solved and we can find M and C and we would be done, right? Is this clear? So please do give me feedback now. If this is. Yes, so, sir. Yes, is this clear? Can we proceed? Or if you have a question, I'll be happy yes, to sir. answer. Yes, very good. Yes, sir. It's clear. It's clear? Okay. So let's proceed. Now, okay. But the points do not all lie on a straight line. This is not expected, right? If you take an experiment and plot. For example, if you plot the logarithm of the number of COVID uh, positive patients in uh, Tamil Nadu uh, on the x on the y axis, and on the x axis you plot the number of the time in days, then the points that you see, the po the plots, the points that you get on the da the data points do not actually will will not actually lie on a line. Although what you want to do is you want to still draw the line that best, best fits this data. That's what you want to do. So the points do not all lie on a straight line. Not expected. This we don't expect. So what do we do? Okay. So we are, what I want to, um, what this means, the fact that all points do not lie on a straight line precisely means that this system of equations that we wrote in the previous slide, it's the same system, does not have a solution. Okay, So this system that we are trying to solve for M and C, this system does not have a solution. I hope this is clear. So what we are trying to do is solve a system which does not have a solution. It's kind of contradictory, right? We are trying to solve a system, but it does not have a solution. So what do we do? So this is precisely the, the problem at hand. If all the points lie on a line, then of course you can solve it easily, but not all points lie on that line. So lie on any line. So this system of equations is not expected to have a solution Nevertheless, you want to sort of force a solution or put it another way. Here is the question. Here is the question that arises. Is there a best approximation to an overdetermined system? I will explain this term overdetermined system in a minute of linear equations as above. So what we have here is once again, n equations where n could be a very large number. And remember, n is the number of data points. This could be a very large number. For example, in the COVID situation, you would, you maybe, you know, Tamil Nadu, I don't remember when the, when the first case in Tamil Nadu was, maybe sometime in February or March. And now we have now 70 days past that. So you will have first day, second day, third day, 70th day. You have large set of data points and you have only two unknowns, M and C, right? So these two unknowns, are subject to, to you know uh, n different constraints you for example when i write y1 is equal to mx1 plus c that is one constraint y2 is equal to mx2 plus c that is a second constraint and so on there are n constraints on these two unknowns so this is what is meant by an overdetermined system you have fewer variables and many more equations and the equations are inconsistent, meaning there is no solution to the system, right? Which precisely means that there is no straight line that passes through these. In that case, what do we do? How do we go about 
modifying the system in some way so that it becomes solvable and so that I can find this line that best fits this data. That is the question. Okay. Is this uh, clear now? Um, please tell me whether we can proceed or I, or if you have a question or uh, I need some feedback. So one of you, please, or one or more of you, please give me some feedback. Sir, yes, sir. Proceed, sir. Proceed? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So um, now let's move on. Okay. So let us go back to this running example. Okay. So what we have here is this, this set of equations. I have written it in matrix form on, on the right side, but I have written it explicitly out. So you 1, 3, and 3 are y1, y2, y3. This 1, 2, 3 are the x1, x2, x3. And you have these three equations. 1 is equal to 1m plus c. 3 is equal to 2m plus c. 3 is equal to 3m plus c. So these three equations, you see, these are overdetermined. For example, this system does not have a solution. Right. So why, why does this not have a solution? Well, you can try to do this by means of just some high school algebra. Of course, you may be familiar with row reduction, etc. And so you can try to solve the system. But let us just do it as in high school. So if I subtract the first equation from the second, I will just get m is equal to 2, right? I'm subtracting the first equation from the second. So this 3 minus 1 becomes 2, c minus c becomes 0, 2m minus 1m becomes m. So m is equal to 2 is what I get. Now, if I plug back that value in the first equation, I'll get 1 is equal to 1 times 2 plus c. So what is the value of c? Can somebody please tell me? I'm waiting for one of you to tell me the value of C. If I put M equal to 2 here, what, what, what is the value of C? Could some participant please answer that question? I'm putting m equal to 2 in the first equation. So I get 1 is equal to 2 plus c. So c is equal to? Minus. Minus 1. Very good. Very good. OK. C becomes minus, minus one. 1. Very good. OK. Now, c becomes minus 1. So now if I put the, those values, m is equal to 2 and c equal to minus 1, the second equation is satisfied because m equals 2 makes this 4 minus 1, which is 3. But the third equation is not satisfied because if I put m equals 2 and c equals minus 1, then this becomes the right-hand side of the third equation becomes 3 times 2 minus 1, which is 5. But on the left-hand side, I have 3. So this, these three equations do not have a solution. Is this clear? I'm waiting for some feedback. So do you agree that these... Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. This does not have a solution. Okay. Now I want to phrase it in another way. So I want to phrase this fact. So we just did a calculation and observed that this system of equations, these three equations, do not have a solution. I want to rewrite that condition. So observe the following. Look at this matrix equation on the right side. 1, 3, 3 is equal to 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1 times mc. That can be rewritten as follows. I have, I have done this. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, Uh, I'm, I'm just having some technical difficulty. I'll, I'll, I'll just come back one minute. Yeah, I hope you can see this now. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll... Okay. Is this clear now? Okay. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Okay, good. So look at the bottom left hand side, right hand side of the screen. So this matrix equation, I have written it like this. So this, this multiplication, and this is a very important calculation for us. You observe that another way of computing the right hand side of this matrix is as follows. This one, two, three, the first column gets multiplied by M and the second column gets multiplied by one, sorry, gets multiplied by C. The second column one, one, one gets multiplied by C. And so the right hand side can be written as this column vector one, two, three times M plus this column vector one, one, one times C. That is the right hand side and the left hand side is one, three, three. And the fact that there is no solution means this can never equal, the left hand side can never equal the right hand side, no matter what values of M and C I chose. No matter what value of M I put here, no matter what value of C I put here, this equation is never satisfied. That is what it means for this system not to have a solution. Now you can reinterpret this as follows. This precisely means that you cannot find 133 as a linear, you cannot write 133 as a linear combination of these two columns, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 1, 1. I repeat, the fact that this system has no solution precisely means that this column here, 133, is not, you cannot write it as a linear combination of the two columns of the matrix on the right side, namely 1, 2, 3, and 1, 1, 1, right? Because no matter what coefficients I choose M and C, I will never get, I will never be able to get 1, 3, 3. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Should we proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, so uh, let's, uh, um, just one second. I, oh, sorry, okay. Okay, can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, so here is the problem. This 1, 3, 3. So, uh, uh, see, we are in a three dimensional space because all these are three cross one column vectors. So, 1, 2, 3, I have depicted as a vector. 1, 1, 1, I, ha I have depicted as a vector in this XYZ coordinate system. Of course, I have not, this is a very schematic picture. This, you know, this one, one, one and one, two, three, I've not precisely drawn them. This is just for illustration purposes. But just imagine this P, this capital P, to be the plane that is spanned by these two vectors, one, one, one and one, two, three, right? These two vectors will span a plane in three dimensional space. And the fact that this one, three, three, is not a linear combination of these two vectors, means that if I draw the arrow to that vector 1, 3, 3, that does not lie in the plane spanned by these other two vectors, right? So that's what I have written here. P is equal to plane generated by 1, 2, 3, and 1, 1, 1. And this vector 1, 3, 3 does not belong to P. That is the problem. That is why there is no solution. Right. So here is the main idea of the talk. This is the most, this is sort of the uh, really important point of the talk. So here we have a system in which the, you know, this 133, right? If you go to the, if you remember the previous screen, this 133 was not in the column space. Uh, in the sorry, in the space generated by these two columns, one, two, three, and one, one, one. Now, 
how can we remedy it? and that was what is that was why the system did not have a solution so to remedy this what should i do i should somehow make sure that i should somehow modify such these three vectors such that this this vector 133 three, somehow after modification comes into the plane generated by 111 and 123 okay so the idea now is what we need to do therefore is replace this 133 three. this is a very simple idea so you have a point you you have to imagine this in three dimensional space you have a point which is not lying on a plane you have a plane in three dimensional space and you have a point that is not lying on the plane and given such a situation there is always a point that is closest to this given point 133 three, on the plane generated by 123 and 11 so, so this the idea is to replace this point 133 by its so called orthogonal projection to the plane p in other words the point that i have indicated here in red so the idea is you replace this 133 by that point that is closest to 133 but lies in the plane so you will get some other point but now, uh, hello uh, i am hearing some uh, other voices okay now they're gone i'll proceed so the idea once again is to replace this 133 by the point that is closest to it and lies on the plane that is called the orthogonal projection of this point on the plane i i expect you have at least an intuitive idea of this orthogonal projection what you do is you drop a perpendicular to the plane from this point here this tip of this arrow here and what you will then generate is another arrow whose tip lies this red arrow here whose tip lies in the plane so you replace that and then you solve the system and that is the main idea okay now we are going to execute this idea and there is one more beautiful formula that is coming up but this is the main idea so i will briefly pause here and ask the participants if this idea is clear i need some feedback you have to tell me whether this idea is clear i can explain this again because this is the most crucial part of the talk yes sir it's clear is it clear okay can somebody else also uh, i hear the same voice just so that we uh, can somebody else unmute their mic and please tell me whether it is clear or not sir yes sir it's clear it's clear okay good by the way i am very happy to answer questions right so if something is not clear or you want it explained again i am i am very willing to do it so please do not hesitate okay uh, at any time if you have a question just unmute your mic and ask the question okay i'll be i don't mind going back i don't mind stopping and explain okay so with that understanding i'll proceed okay so i need to okay just one second i need to reorient this okay i hope now sorry sorry sorry, sorry. i hope now you can see the screen yes sir yes okay good oh sorry okay now here is the problem given so we started trying to draw the line of best fit and then realized that um, realized that in order to do that i must really understand how to solve 
uh, an overdetermined system of equations, right? And that led me to the idea that, for example, this in the previous exam in the running example that we have, this one three three is not in the columns in the space generated by the vectors 1, 2, 3, and 1, 1, 1. That is causing the problem. Therefore, what I should do is replace 1, 3, 3 by its orthogonal projection to the plane generated or spanned by 1, 2, 3, and 1, 1, 1. Now, let us make this idea more, let us carry this idea forward uh, in general. So, we are trying to solve the problem now of ortho finding the orthogonal projection in general. So let, here is the formulation. Given a subspace W of Rn, W is de depicted by this plane here. It need not be a plane. It could be a three-dimensional space. It could be any dimension. N is N could be large. Of course, this dimension of W will be less than or equal to N. For example, N could be 100 and W could be 75. The, the dimension of W could be 75. So for the sake of illustration, I have drawn it as a plane here, but W could be of, of much larger dimension. I repeat, it, it has to be of dimension at most m, but it can be of any, uh, any value less than or equal to m. And suppose I have a vector v. So here is the vector v in general. This is a vector in Rn. Okay. How to find the orthogonal projection, let's call it v prime, of v on w. So I drop the orthogonal from V to the space W, right? And I want to find V prime. So I'm given W, I'm given V, and I want to find V prime. That is the problem. So how am I given W? So W is typically given as if W is the column space of an n cross m matrix A with linearly independent columns, okay, then the answer is. Now, never mind the answer. I'll explain this in a minute. But let's understand W. W is given here as the span of certain vectors. Those vectors are the columns of A of the matrix A. Note that I have chosen this to be n cross n. So n, because we are in Rn, if I have an n cross m matrix, then there are m columns, each each of which, each of those columns, I can think of as a vector in Rn. And those, so I have m vectors in Rn, and their span is W. And I can assume, uh, without much loss of generality, that they are linearly independent. In fact, I will see, for example, let us go back a few screens. Let us go back here, here. So this is the system we would like to solve. And this will be the matrix A, the x1, x2, xn, 1, 1, 1 that you see. Now, here the columns will be linearly independent because you are going to choose different values for x's, right? Because you are running an experiment and x's are the, so to say, independent variable. Uh, variable. So you are going to choose different values. So for example, in the COVID example, X1 is the number of days. So you will have several data. X1 could be, you know, so for example, one, two, three, up to 70 days or something like that. And so this column and this one, 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 the moment you have two different values of X, this, these two columns will be linearly independent. So in the problem we have on hand, surely the columns of this matrix A are going to be linearly independent. So there is no loss of generality in assuming that the columns of A are linearly independent. That's why we have made this assumption. Okay, And then the answer, the claim is the answer for V prime is given by this beautiful formula. So V prime is given by A times, and then you have this matrix A transpose A and then an inverse, and then A transpose V. Okay. Now, notice that V is a... What is the size of V? Can somebody please tell me what, what kind of a column matrix is V? What is the size of V? 
just so that you are understanding can i ask that one of you please answer that question v is a vector in rn so you expect it to be what is the size if i write it as a column vector what is its size hello can i expect somebody to answer that please hello hello will somebody please answer that question hello i am not sure i am being audible host nagarajan sir are, are am i audible audible sir audible uh, yes, sir. Uh, i i would like one of one of the participants to answer my question please what do you or am i losing people so this v what is the size of this this is a vector in rn so it's an n cross 1 matrix right so you i am thinking of that as an n cross 1 matrix a transpose a is an n n by m matrix so this is a transpose will be a m m cross n matrix and what is the size of a transpose a so a transpose is m cross n and a is n cross m so a transpose a is m cross m and its inverse will also be m cross m and this a is n cross m so you have a n cross m m cross m and then an m cross n so the total this whole thing a a transpose a inverse a transpose that whole thing will be an n cross n matrix v is an n cross 1 matrix so this is n cross n times n cross 1 matrix so this will give me a n cross 1 which is v prime v prime is another vector in rn and so that's an n cross 1 matrix i hope is this is this clear should i proceed or audience there any queries they are saying it is clear it is clear okay yeah uh, okay okay so i'll proceed so here of course the question is i am writing an inverse here the question is why is this a transpose a is invertible right why is this a transpose a so in order that in order that i be able to write this inverse and get away with it it must be it it must be sure i must be sure that a transpose a is invertible but it is because i am claiming because a has linearly independent columns and therefore a transpose a is invertible that's a claim i leave that as a exercise for you okay it is uh, mentioned also as an exercise in the notes that are, that was distributed and that's a good exercise for you to do what is important here is that a is a real matrix right we are we are working with real numbers not complex numbers and use the fact that a is a real matrix and then you can show easily although it may be a little tricky that a transpose a is invertible if a has linearly independent columns we have assumed that a has linearly independent columns so this a transpose a is invertible and therefore it i am justified in writing this inverse and i am claiming that v prime is given by this beautiful formula now of course we have to say why this formula is justified and that is done in the next slide okay so in the next slide we are going to prove this formula okay uh, i find this formula to be really beautiful um, i don't know if you agree at the moment with me but it's a 
very nice uh, formula. Sorry, I, I am having just one second. Yeah, so here is the proof of the formula. Okay. Okay, let's see the proof of the formula. So we want to prove that V prime is A times A transpose A inverse A transpose V. And this may look like, how am I going to prove this, right? It looks very complicated, but the proof is really easy. What you have to observe is the following. What, else, what are the properties of the orthogonal projection? If I have a vector that is, if vector V that is perpendicular to W, then its orthogonal projection to W is zero. And secondly, if it is, in W, then its orthogonal projection is itself. So I so I must get back V if V belongs to W, and I must get zero if V is perpendicular to W. So these are the two conditions of a orthogonal. Any linear map which satisfies these conditions is going to be the orthogonal projection. So let us observe that I have written this formula out, and because this this matrix on the right side. A, A transpose, A inverse, A transpose is an N by N matrix. I see that the relation between V prime and V is linear. That is, this, ma this matrix that I have, A, A transpose, A inverse, A transpose, is an N by N matrix. So it represents a linear map from Rn to Rn. So the association V maps to V prime is a linear map. This is the first observation. And given that, then I only have to observe two things. If I take V to be perpendicular to W, then I then this V prime becomes zero. That is the first condition here. I've written it as thus enough to check that one. V prime is equal to zero if V belongs to the orthogonal complement of W. And secondly, I, V prime equals V in case V is in W. These are the two cases we should check. And both cases are rather very easy to check. So let us look at the first case. V is perpendicular to W. So if that is so, then let us look at what W is. W is the space spanned by the columns of A. And so V is perpendicular to W means V is perpendicular to each of those vectors, the each of the column vector, each of the columns of A. That precisely means by matrix multiplication, A transpose V is zero because when I take uh, imagine a column of V, if I transpose it, it becomes a row and then row times column will just, it's just like taking the inner product of the original of the column of A with V. I, I hope this is clear. And uh, if not, please tell me, I'll explain it. So this precisely means that V prime is zero because A transpose V is zero. Therefore, this matrix on the right side Already A transpose V is zero, so no matter what I, if I further multiply it with A transpose A inverse and then A, all that doesn't matter because A transpose V is already zero, so V prime is zero. And secondly, if V is in W, then that means V is equal to A times U for some U in Rn. This, this is because Again, W is the column space of the matrix A. In other words, it is the space spanned by the columns of A. So the fact that V is in W means that V must be a linear co combination of the columns of A. That precisely means that V is equal to A times U for some U. Okay. Now, if I plug that value in, so instead of V, if I plug in A times U, then this V prime becomes a, see this right, you know, the bottom right hand side of the screen, V prime is equal to A times A T A inverse times A transpose A U. But then this A transpose A inverse and A transpose A, I have, I have them next to each other. That's identity. 
So I get back V prime is equal to A times U, but A times U was V. Therefore, V prime is equal to V in this case. So this proves this formula, right? Um, is this okay? Can we proceed? I need some feedback. I'm talking to, you know, an empty, I'm just talking to a screen, so I don't know whether I'm making sense or not. Yes, sir, proceed. Proceed, okay. Okay, so here is, we are almost done, right? So this is the, this slide and one more slide and the talk will be over. So, uh, so, I hope you will pay attention. So let us formulate what we have understood. Let A be an n cross m matrix with linearly independent columns. And if I have a linear system AZ is equal to B I've written here, the best approximate solution to the linear system AZ is equal to B is given by. So this is a linear system which does not have a solution. Maybe, maybe it does not have a solution. So what I need to do is replace B by, so the fact that this may not have a solution precisely means that B may not be in the column space of A. So what I need to do is replace B by the orthogonal projection of B to the column space of A. And the formula for that from the previous slide is precisely what you see here in the next line, A times A transpose A inverse, A transpose B. So instead of B, I write, substitute this. So that's what I have explained here. Replace B by its orthogonal projection to the column space of A. Suppose I do that. And then we observe that you may cancel A because A has linearly independent columns. So what I get is this formula, Z is equal to A transpose A inverse transpose B. Now, is um, the formula for the best approximate solution to an overdetermined system. This is the overdetermined system, A Z equal to B. Doesn't matter, even if it is not overdetermined, even if B happens to be in the column space of A, this will, this will work because then this right hand side will just reduce to b and you 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 will be all right okay so this is the uh, formula for the best approximate solution okay so we have a formula now uh, let us go back and apply this formula to the situation of our running example and try to find the line of best fit for those three points, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 3. That example that we, uh, uh, baby toy example that we took. Let us go back to that example and uh, see how to apply this formula and get the answer to our problem. Okay, so I will now go to the, uh, not, not to these slides, but go to the last, last, uh, page of the notes that I circulated in the link. So I will uh, go there. Okay. Now here, I have, I hope all of you can see the screen. Is this clear? Is my... Yes, sir. I can make it bigger. Yeah. Is this good? So let us take this example, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 3, right? And so what, what, were, what were we trying to solve? We were trying to solve this MC is equal to 
a times sorry a times mc is equal to this column vector 133 b 133 this is what we were trying to solve right and so now what we need to do is replace this b by this it's orthogonal well anyway we we have done the next step also the we can directly apply the formula this is so i have in this uh, notes i have in the slides i had said in place of x but doesn't matter it is the same formula this is the formula that on the top of the screen for the best approximate solution to the overdetermined system so I write MC is equal to A transpose A inverse, A transpose A B, where A is this matrix and B is this matrix. Remember, B was Y1, Y2, Y3. So the points were 1, 1, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 3. So remember that the first column of A was X1, X2, X3, and the second column of A was just 1, 1, 1. That is the way the matrix um, um, equation that's the way the matrix equation was set up so we just have to apply this formula with a is equal to this value and b is equal to this value and so let us go ahead so if you compute a transpose a uh, you it's easy calculation it will become 14663 i hope all of you can do this calculation i have to compute the inverse of this and there is a standard way to compute the inverse so what I do is I put the matrix, the given matrix, A transpose A on the left side. This is a two by two matrix. And I put an identity matrix on, uh, on the right side of this, like this, as shown here. And I try to do row operations on this uh, um, left side so, that, so as to make this identity. And then what I so what I have done here in this in these steps, as you can see, I've subtracted twice the second row from the first row. If I do that, I get 14 minus 6 times 2, which is this 14 minus 12, which is 2, and the 6 minus 2 times 3, which is 0. And then this becomes 1 minus 2 times 0, which is 1, and 0 minus 2 times 1, which is minus 2. So that's how I got this, and then I can try to make this zero by the second I, I, I can try to make the six zero by adding three times the first row or minus three times the first row to the second row which if i do i'm remember i'm adding minus three times the first row to the second row so this will become one times minus three plus zero which is minus three and minus two times minus three which is six add it to one that becomes seven so i get this and finally uh, i multiply the first row by one half and the second row by one third to make this matrix on the left side an identity matrix and if i do that then the right side becomes one half minus one and minus one seven by three so that if you remember is the inverse of the matrix this is how to find the matrix inverse so this is the inverse of that matrix. So now I can substitute MC is equal to A transpose A inverse, which we just computed to be this matrix. And then A transpose, which is 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1. And B is this value. And so the answer comes out to be 1, 1 by 3. So the line that best fits these three points is Y is equal to X plus 1 third. That is the equation of the line. Now it is a good exercise for you to go and plot this line in that, you know, you could draw these three points, one, one, two, sorry, one, one, yeah, one, one, two, three, and three, three, and also this line and see how it passes in between those three points. Okay. Uh, so that is the end of my talk. Uh, this is my first uh, time doing this online on Zoom or on a, any platform that for that matter. And uh, it is quite difficult to lecture to, uh, you know, because I'm not getting any feedback. I'm not able to see you. I'm not able to hear you. So I am not sure how useful or understandable it was. I apologize for all the deficiencies and the technical uh, hitches at the beginning of the lecture, but 
I am done now speaking. So if the host agrees, we can have, I am happy to answer questions. Sir Nagarajan, sir, I am done. Hello. Hello, sir. We are getting good feedback, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, if, there are any, sir. if there are any questions, I am happy to answer. No, sir. No. Okay. Uh, Is there any questions from the audience? Hello. Audience can unmute and they can ask questions. No questions, sir. Okay, so uh, I am done, sir. Then uh, I okay, hope sir. it was Thank useful. You, I am not. I am. I yes, apologize sir, yes. sir, for the deficiencies. Like I said, no, this is my first time. Only the technical problems, sir. Technical <laughs> problem. Happens. Also, it is very difficult to lecture. I realize uh, because uh, I am just talking to a screen, so I am not getting any feedback. I am not able no, to see people. So. Uh, no, for no, everyone, it is new, sir. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. I, all I'm saying is it's new for me. So uh, I, I have done. We are uh, also new to the technical. Yeah, but yeah. we have to accept the changes, sir. That is and true. No other way so, to go. One, one good thing, one maybe would be that the audience is, uh, you know, uh, if they can participate more, then it will be uh, yes. more. Um, it will be better, I think. Sir, Although one with a large uh, audience, uh, if lots one of people... audience has put, uh, it's very useful and informative, sir. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, given like thank you. I hope it box. was. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I ask you to work out that example yes, in sir. detail uh, for yourself. Okay, sir. And uh, read the notes. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, it is very useful. One audience has given in the chat box. Kirtana. Third thank year. You. Thank you, Kirkana. Sir, so shall we finish, sir? Yes, I'm. I'm. Uh, yes, sir, I'm done. Sir, on behalf of our management and principal, sir, we are very grateful that you have accepted our in invitation for this webinar. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I, th I uh, my you. sincere thank thanks the, thank you for the goes to you. If I uh, I have asked the first time and you have uh, immediately you have accepted, sir. We and uh, our students are very grateful to you, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you for the invitation. It's my pleasure. Okay. Uh, very patient audience. The only the thing is we can't see them. Directly, that's a thing. Otherwise, it went smoothly. Thank you, sir. Thank you, audience. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Will you enter? Sorry. Hello. You are muted by the host. Hello. Siva, the mathematics the complete and over time mark the rename money. I'm <laughs> 
மேக்ஸ் மேல் இல்ல மேக்ஸ் ஃபீமேல் இல்ல அதுதான் அந்த இதுல தான் வரும் நம்ம மேல் வந்து உள்ள பத்தின் நம்ம இது பண்றோம் அவ்வளவு தான் நம்ம மேல் வந்து நம்ம அப்படியே மேல அப்படியே கேக்குறாங்க <laughs> 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 <laughs>
हेलो सर